All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another podcast episode. Hope you guys all had a great Thanksgiving. I know I did. I ate way too much food. You How about you, Will? Fiend. Yeah, no, I ate a lot, too. It don't look like it, but, I mean, for me, it was a lot. <laughs> Wait, tell me this. What's your favorite Thanksgiving food? Okay, well, here's the thing. So we have we have two Thanksgivings, right? We have a lunch and a dinner portion, right? Yep. The lunch portion is typically, you know, American fare, you know, turkey, stuffing, gravy, mashed potatoes, the yep. works for the most part. We usually skip the ham. Um, and then we have like a Cambodian one. And typically we take the turkey meat that's left over from the afternoon, right? And we use that in our curry and we use that eating with vermicelli noodles or with baguettes and any leftovers like prior. You know, we got some egg rolls, you know, some beef skewers. It's really, yeah. So, okay, Dude, so I favorite. can't believe you guys do it that way because Why? ours, well, every Thanksgiving I've ever done, you, we have so much food left over from lunch that that's just what we eat for dinner. Yeah. Well, I mean, we just have double the amount of leftovers and some of the leftovers for <laughs> lunch is used for dinner as well. You know, like I said, the turkey leftover, we use well, that for fair, curry. Well, fair, fair. Yeah. Yeah. All um, right. So hit me with this favorite. Well, it's the Cambodian curry with turkey. That's for the Cambodian version. And for the American fare, um, fried turkey is pretty fire. And then fried like, turkey? Yeah, fried turkey. You never, you have, ain't somebody deep fry a whole turkey? You never, you never had that before? I don't think so. Bro, you're missing out. That's the best. That's the, like, the only way to eat turkey. Shout outs. Like, let me know in the comments below if, you know, you've had fried turkey. Like, it's the only way to do it. I huh? had it twice. Uh, Richard from OMFG Pickleball when I was in Houston, Texas. They did a friend's giving. And he had this huge machine contraption, and it's he bought it specifically just to fry this like fifty pound turkey. And ooh, wow, was it oh so delicious! Shoot, I'm just a stuffing guy, man. Like I could just yeah. eat stuffing on Thanksgiving and be content. the carbs. Well, yeah, I mean, because stuffing is all carbs, dude. It's so good. You throw some gravy on it, and maybe yeah. maybe you mix in some turkey for some protein. Oh, it's just so I like. There could be nothing else, and I would be content. <laughs> You'd be content with that? I think for the sides, it'd have to be... It depends on who's making the mac and cheese or who's making the mashed potatoes. Yeah. Like, mashed potatoes is also good. I, I, I mean, do like mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes is pretty good. Like, I don't... I, th I feel like it's pretty hard to make bad mashed potatoes, although I have had it, but I feel like it's, it's kind of difficult, especially with gravy, you know, and then mac and cheese, hit or miss. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. You know, it depends on who's making it. So. Yeah, see, it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. I get a lot better control with the mashed potatoes, and the the stuffing's a lot more springy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> <I hear you. laughs> All right. Anyways, enough about food. Uh, yeah. Before we dive into stuff, I do just a couple updates for people. Uh, I made a document over Black Friday that has every pickleball deal that I could find from pretty much every major company and a lot of the smaller ones. So I will mm -hmm. have that in the show notes if you're still looking for a good deal on some paddles. I think most of them should still be going by the time this podcast is live. There might be a few that aren't, but I think a lot of the deals went until the 28th or 30th. So there might still be time for you to get these. And a lot of them do stack with code PB Studio. And some of the best ones that I personally saw where you could get a Rhombus Pulsar for $110. That's a crazy mm -hmm. good deal. That's super, yeah. so good. The Pursuit Pro for $175, which is good. also top tier. That paddle was amazing this year. Carbon, 25% mm -hmm. off. The bag is fantastic. Is that Yo, what you're using right now? No, I'm gonna go into more of the bag later. I'm using, I'm testing out a bag from ADV right now, and ah, we'll talk right. more about that a little bit later. But essentially, I'm, I'm working on creating a pickleball centric bag with this company called ADV uh, from this guy northern in Northern Virginia. He used to play tennis. He's also Cambodian, and he's he makes um, two really great tennis bags. And he reached out to me and asked me to help him make this pickleball centric bag. And I'm testing it out. And I'm going to show you guys. I have like an unboxing video that should be coming out maybe end of next week. But definitely follow me. Um, if you want in, some input and in seeing the bag, I think there's some really cool features in there. But with that being said, the carbon bag is really cool. Are you using the new one? The one that basically transforms into a sling? 
So I am, I just started using it, but I think because of the sling feature, I feel like they actually had to take away some space yes. from the center compartment. They did. Because it's, no. well, for me, it's noticeably smaller. For most people, it might be fine, but it's enough space gone in the middle that it actually might make me go back to the first one. There's still tons of space, but like, keep in mind, like I'm trying to stuff, you know, like four paddles on the side pockets. And then I'm probably trying to stuff like another four paddles in the center yeah. with balls. And it's like, and a whole I'm a niche case. of LMNT. Yeah. I yeah. Know. There's <laughs> just no way. <laughs> okay. I have to tell the story. I wasn't going to bring it up because there was no, there was no Reason way to do to. this, but you just gave me a transition into it. So I'm going to tell the story. Mm -hmm. So, Somebody was trying to help me get an element sponsorship because they had a connection there. Yeah. And they they got me hooked up. Uh, we talked and they were basically like, yeah, like here's our threshold for like our minimum that we want someone to have like on podcast views and all that. And like, I just don't meet it. And it was totally fine. Whatever, you know, it just gives me something to strive for. And but they were like, oh, we'll just send you like a care package. And I was like, oh, they'll probably just send like a couple element packets. Dude, they gave me like 170 element packets, a hat, a water bottle. I was like, dude, they like went oh, all they out. Hooked, they hooked it up. Yeah, for real. So I am I am salt loaded now. So it's, yeah. it's great. Okay, okay, um, okay. But anyways, the rest of the deals that I saw, um, Vatic Pro, the power series, the orange one, you can yeah. get for 110, very cheap. Uh, bread and butter, filth, or loco, down 125. to 125, which is also crazy because the loco just came out, so it's kind of cool that they're discounting yeah. that. I don't even uh, have it yet. Doug, if you're listening same. to this, dude, hit me with the loco. <laughs> I know. So many people have been asking me, they're like, dude, what do you think about the loco? And I'm like, well, if I had it, maybe I'd tell you, but I don't have it. <laughs> exactly. Yo, same, same here. People ask me, yo, when are you going to drop that loco review? And I'm like, this you're like when is second. doug gonna drop it into my mailbox that's right doug <laughs> just kidding me. I just, dude, honestly though his his latest uh like ad or reel or whatever when he he dyed his hair and he dressed up like what's called it max headroom like that retro <laughs> dude like i don't know i think like Mercedes there is hilarious. no paddle company owner like more dedicated to making an ad than doug like i there are He's I've, so there's excellent. you're not gonna find another paddle company owner that's gonna do that like yeah <laughs> and have it work well i think that's a key component of like bread and butter's marketing is oh yeah it's like a leap good job above. Good yeah job, they though. they do a great job all right next um, up six zero six, is it only double black diamond no it also does apply to the black diamond i think the sapphire is also on sale too uh, so you can get the double black diamond or black diamond for 144, which is the cheapest we've ever seen it. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of been like paddle of the year. So if you're looking to pick one up, great time to do it. And then uh, one of the last ones for me is Professor Pickleball. Now, admittedly, I have not actually hit this paddle, mm -hmm. but I have hit enough pickleball paddles to know what this paddle is probably going to be. And from the specs, it's just a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber paddle, but it is currently 75 bucks so that's a really good deal for a gen one raw carbon fiber no matter how you slice it if you need one for a family or a friend good time to pick one up very cheap yeah, for sure for sure okay so what i got is the ethos paddles or paddles from a company called ethos they have one called the arete and the scoria they're just long handle shape paddles if you guys saw my story the other day i, I asked you if this shape was cool and it was like a paddle that looked like a shield like it kind of looks like a triangle <laughs> Yeah, it kind of looks like a triangle. And basically, it goes for 160 but if you use my code, Pickleball Wheel, there's 40% off for you, so it drops it down to $96. I played with the paddles. They're very good. Um, if you need something with a long handle, um, and also they have like a more like traditional square shape as well, but they play very good. 40% off, that's huge. It goes down to 96 They're thermoform. They look good. Um, and if you need a long handle, so check that one out, Ethos Paddle. Um, and then I don't have any code for this next company, Thrive, but we're going to maybe talk more about that in the next section. We'll probably save that for the next section. But uh, long story short is I met the owner. He came out to Tulsa before Thanksgiving break. I think he came out there to talk to my buddy Grant, who is thinking about um, maybe working with him or signing with him or something like that. I'm not sure. But Grant asked me to come out to meet him, test out his paddles. I had a good time. So that was pretty cool. And 
I guess uh, next up, I mean, we're going to talk about this ADV bag that I've been testing out a bit. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with ADV, they make premium like tennis bags. Like their motto when they first came out with their first bag was like, if Apple were to make a tennis bag, this is what it would be. They had a very successful Kickstarter. I actually backed that Kickstarter myself personally before I knew um, the owner. I got both bags and I was like, man, I just wish like some of these features were just a little bit smaller or whatnot. And this would be a perfect pickleball bag as well. And lo and behold, I actually got his contact information from, we had a mutual friend in Northern Virginia. I just never had a chance to reach out to him. And then out of the blue, he hits me up and he's like, hey dude, I've been researching pickleball. And I, and I was like, I'm, I'm Lavi, I'm from ADV. And I was like, dude, I know who you are. This is crazy. <laughs> I've been meeting to reach out to you. Then he reaches out to me and I'm like, I'm going to say that's like a very good feeling when you want to like connect with somebody and somehow they find you first. Like that was very cool. And yeah, he came through, he brought his prototypes and he basically was just like, Hey, what do pickleball players need? And I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to show you like the unboxing video and then I'll show the features of the bag. And then if you guys like follow me, I want you to tell me in the comments, like what you guys look for in a bag like, as you're traveling, going to tournaments, etc. But I'm super excited for it. Once it's done, like I'm going to, we're, we're going to like launch another Kickstarter, um, for this bag. So it's going to be super cool. Uh, this is like probably the most exciting project that I'm a part of right now. I'm can't be. Yeah, that's stoked. awesome. Yeah. That's sweet. Cool. For sure. Anything else you got? Uh, last thing. Yeah. Just one more thing. If you guys are looking for any athletic clothing, chubby shorts, uh, they are running a sale on the shorts and their shirts. I actually haven't used their shirts before, but I did just order like three pairs of them cause they were only 20 bucks and I just need more athletic shirts. Uh, but I've used the shorts tons and I love them. It's pr actually, it's the only shorts that I play pickleball in now. And your wife, lets those you play are on those? sale. What's that? I so see your wife lets you play in those. Sheesh. Well, you know, you know, sometimes she <laughs> she might say no way, but you're, you're no, not leaving not the actually, house in those. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, the shorts, they're fantastic. I really like them. They're 40 bucks right now. Super good deal. So if you're looking to pick up some good athletic shorts, I can vouch for them. I do enjoy them quite a bit. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all the Black Friday deals in terms of pickleball. Of course, if you want more, go check out that document uh, that I mentioned because it has a ton of the other sales that I found. You'll find lots of stuff in there, but those were just some of the best ones that specifically stood out to us. Yeah, heck yeah. All right, moving on to our primary topic. We are going to be talking about lead tape, our thoughts on lead tape, weight, really specs on paddles in general. Cause you and I, we've been doing this for a while now. And I think we've hit with so many paddles you've measured and specced out so many paddles. I think you have an idea of like what works, what doesn't and what paddles come good just out of the box. So I don't yeah. know. Why don't you give your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, so one thing that kind of inspired this topic is I've seen a lot of people online who are really against adding any weight to their paddle. Like I always see this phrase that's like, if it doesn't come perfect out of the box for me, then I want nothing to do with it. Like I'm just gonna keep finding, looking for a different paddle until it's right out of the box. And there, there's a lot of, I guess, just different issues I have with this. If that's how you wanna do it, fine. Like all the power to you, but I think you can make your paddle finding journey significantly easier if you're willing to use lead tape especially because even if you find a paddle you like, there's a chance it's not gonna come the same weight the next time, the balance mm -hmm. might be slightly off. Like it's not always the same exact paddle that you bought the first time and weight can kind of help you get it there. Yeah. And I think, well, at least I think it's a reasonably well-known fact, it might not actually be, but lead tape can take a paddle that you do not like and turn it into one that you like a lot. This has happened to me several times now. I think the Gearbox Pro Power Elongated gets way better with lead tape. Uh, the 003, when I use that, got a lot mm -hmm. better with lead tape. In my opinion, for me, almost every single paddle is better with lead tape than it is without. But I know you mm -hmm. are not, I think lately I've seen you use lead tape more than I ever have, but in the past, I actually haven't seen you use lead tape much. So maybe you and I can kind of go, yeah 
like give perspective on both sides since yeah, yeah. we're a little different. Yeah, so I like I don't have anything against lead tape. The only thing is that if I'm reviewing a paddle, like I want to review it out of the box just yep. to, you know, give you an idea of what it is just because I I personally feel that the majority of players out there play with paddles without lead tape. They want to see what it plays like out of the box, which is the main reason why I don't, right? Um, it's just who I'm catering towards. Do I think lead tape helps? For sure. And then for me, it's it's like a time thing. I, I would have to test the paddle without lead tape and then test the paddle with lead tape. And just with my workload now and my workflow now, I just, I don't have the time to do that and to test, you know, the essentially two different paddles, right? So that's really the primary reason. And then also, I think if you try it without lead tape and it performs fairly fine or like mm-hmm. good, then I think that is a, a kind of indication that maybe the paddle is kind of, you know, more quality. But even that, it's it's difficult because from one paddle to the next paddle that you get, no, no two paddles are like essentially the same, at least right now in the industry, right? You can get two of the same paddles. You can even have them like weighted the same, like from the factory, but it still can play different because yeah. it's just how you know honeycomb polypropylene is just variance in manufacturing right right exactly um so i mean you've seen me playing now with a little bit more um lead tape because like i'm trying to eke out more performance in these paddles now that i'm kind of drilling more and i'm playing like a little bit higher level players people are hitting harder faster i'm like okay this is necessary now you need stability now and I think what most people don't know is that I think a lot of the other specs don't matter nearly as much. I think the two most important specs, and you can tell me what you think is the most important, but it's like twist weight and it's swing weight of a paddle. Like those are pretty, I almost feel like those are the most important now that I've been playing with so many paddles. What what do you think? Yeah, I would generally agree with that. I mean, I think there's, you can get into some pretty big nuance, but I do think that those two things matter a lot to players and unfortunately the current state of the market they're probably some of the least understood because companies haven't really started pushing it yet and this is something i really want to try to egg on more Mm -hmm. of the companies next year there are a lot that are starting to adopt swing weight which is awesome i'd love to see it like i've had companies reach out and ask how to use the perfidy but yeah well so funny you say that because so this guy named scott he's from thrive pickleball you guys can go check them out he lets you choose on his website. He lets you choose the swing weight of your paddle. And for what I understand is that when he gets batches from his manufacturer, um, if the twist weight is like below, I want to say, I forgot what it was. Was it below five or something? He doesn't. He doesn't use it. Like he he does not let anybody. Like he doesn't sell it to anybody. Like the twist weight has to reach, I think. Uh, 5.9 or higher which is a pretty high twist weight and that makes the paddle really stable so if anything under that under that like it doesn't meet his requirements he sends it back or he does something else with it i'm not sure but he won't sell it um to his customers and interestingly enough i i think we should go um meet him in person sometime next year to do this but he says that he's given a bunch of blank paddles to a bunch of pros people who play like professionally or very high level and he lets you hit around with it and then he slowly shifts up the weight of the paddle a little little bit up from the throat to the sides and he says that every single pro or really proficient or high level player always gravitates to like the same specifications with a very with a very minor variance and he's he's like i bet you you and chris and whoever will gravitate towards the same so i'd be curious to see if we go and we do like a, this paddle fitting right yeah to see what specs we end up with it'd be very fascinating to see yeah i think and it's really cool that they're starting to do that and i've thought for a while now that like a service where a company fits the paddle to you the biggest thing is a uh, a local pro shop is going to have to offer this it's a, a little bit more difficult for you know, online retail, you know, if you can try different setups in the shop and they keep tweaking it, it's a little bit easier. And I think it's going to become more common and people would be way more on board with lead tape if they had someone doing that. I think some of it is a little bit of confusion. Where should I place it? How much should I place it? What is it really doing to the paddle for me? And I think if Mm -hmm. someone was just doing it for them, 
they would be all over because you can seriously gain some massive, massive performance upgrades to your paddle just by adding lead. Like if you were thinking about selling yours mm -hmm. because you didn't like it for some reason, I would seriously try doing lead tape before you get rid of it because that might yeah, make you reconsider it. So it's funny you say that because if you do essentially, let's just call it like a paddle fitting once, let's just say more shops do it. Maybe there's some yep. certification or maybe it's just something that just becomes more common. Once you do that once, you kind of have yep. the specs of your paddle, then you can write that down. And then if you wanted to jump brands or go to another place, you kind of have an idea of the specs you like. And then you can, and if you go to a, a local shop or even an online retailer, if you can choose your swing weight or your twist weight or whatever, based on the specs or that, you know, that you've, that you have based on your fitting, then it'd be easier for you to find the paddle kind of that you like. And then with this base right here, it's like, okay, maybe my hands feel a little slower. Okay. Well, let's try to find a paddle with a similar twist weight, but a a slightly less swing weight and you yeah. kind of go from there and it's it'll be easier for you to find a paddle that kind of fits what you need right yeah and i think that is the most interesting thing and most fascinating thing for the future of like paddles for like us as players as we want to get better right so that's why this whole thing with thrive when the owner came by i thought it was so i thought it was cool like that he's doing that and it just kind of pushes the industry forward in terms of quality so that you know if you get bad batches or whatnot like this is not okay so that we don't have so much variance in the paddles that yeah. we get right because a paddle like you had what how many gearboxes like three five that you had to test out because there's variances and you're not sure and people have had quality control issues right it's just i don't know Should well the gearbox is more so it seems to be like a thing where you have to break it in but i have heard of some reports of people claiming that one out of the box was like drastically different than another new one out of the box. So, I mean, the at the the bottom line is paddles. There's variance, period. Like especially when thermoformed got introduced, I feel like the variance went up a lot more. I felt like paddles prior to that, that you could get ones that played a little bit different, but it usually wasn't that drastic. I feel like with the introduction of thermoforming, there was significantly more variance introduced. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. Like, so, lead tape, guys, definitely try it out. I mean, if you haven't already, I mean, Chris did a whole entire video on lead tape and where to put it. But, yeah, definitely try it out. It really just helps with the twist weight. And this this is, I think, the most crucial thing when you strike a ball. And as people are hitting harder and harder, you need stability, like, even more so now. You know, like to make sure that you're hitting the sweet spot so that your paddle doesn't, I don't know, twist in your hand and then, you know, goes flying off. So, uh, you know, you don't get punished. Right. Yeah. Like for I, sure. I, I think play with you, you might need a little bit more <laughs> weight on your side of your paddle sometimes. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just all I'm doing is I'm trying to help you get your reps in for your blocks. I'm actually oh. doing you. This is something you're going to thank digs? me for like three years. <laughs> yeah. This is not even my box, dude. I need to like, yo, with as high as you pop them up here, I need to be running like behind the wall on the next court over <laughs> just to make sure that I can handle these balls that are just being pelted at me, man. See, that's the thing. I'm trying to teach you to not back up and just take the ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, take the it's, ball to my trust face. Trust me, you're, one of these days you're going you're gonna to thank me for it. You're going to thank me. All right. But all right. I take no responsibility if you get an eye injury. That's your fault for not wearing eye protection. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, but eye anyways. Injury. For any of you who haven't watched my lead tape video, which I do highly suggest you watch because the information will be a lot more condensed there. And I think uh, it, it just does a good job of explaining it. We will go over some of the benefits of using it if you don't already know. And yeah, basically we'll do, with uh, lead tape, mm -hmm. you can kind of do anything you want with it. Like you can add power, you can add more control. And by control, really that just means more stability is really what we're saying. And by having a stable paddle, it usually results in better control because you have a better sweet spot, it's more forgiving, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. uh, you can change the balance by adding weight into the handle. And like I said before, you can turn a paddle that you don't like into one that you do do like. Uh, that's exactly what happened to me with the 003. I was like, yeah, this is fine, but like, it's not good for 300 bucks. I added lead and then loved it and used it for ages. So you can really get a wide variety of that. And the main locations, the way I like to think of it, 
is in zones. So if you cut the paddle into thirds, so you have the top third, yeah. the middle third, and then the bottom third, the bottom third is where you're going to get the least impact on hand speed and you'll still <laughs> get some stability benefits, yes. usually about the bottom corners. If you go any lower than the bottom corners, you're you get very diminishing returns on stability. So like bottom corners is about the lowest I would go and still think you'll get good benefit. Once you go up to the middle third, you're now going to increase plow through. You're going to increase stability a lot. Yes. Which is what a lot of people want uh, without yeah. usually significantly increasing swing weight, but it will go up a good bit. Mm -hmm. Top third, you know, top corners in the head, you're just gaining a bunch of power, but you're also significantly significantly increasing your swing weight, which will make your hands slower. So do be aware of that. I personally think that the head is the least beneficial place you can put lead for most people, unless it's way too light for you and you really want more power. But in my opinion, like three and nine, if you had a lot of lead tape there, I think you can get a pretty similar effect and not slow your hands down nearly what, as much. What is the amount of weight that you typically start with people always ask me that like how much weight do i put here and here like they know the spots but they don't know how much weight yeah that's a good question i hmm it really i mean it depends so much on the paddle and so much on the person that is really hard to give a set recommendation but for me it's anywhere between like 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 ounces of lead that i add i'm personally not so trip? worried about or in total? Uh, no total total weight okay so I'm not so much worried about the static weight. In fact, I rarely even check my static weight after I put my lead on. As long as it's still within the swing weight range that I want, I'm usually not very concerned about the static weight, which I know most of you can't check. Most people don't own a swing weight machine, so static weight is the next best thing for you. But the static weight just tells you so little about how the paddle's actually going to swing yeah. that it's kind of like it's not that useful of a number. I could give you a paddle that's nine ounces and you would be like, wow, this is fast in my hand. And I could right. probably give you one that's eight ounces and you're going to go, wow, this is really slow. Right, right, exactly. I think the only, what, what's, okay, what's the swing weight that you typically like your paddles at? I think really ideal for me is between like 113 and 117. Probably up to like 115 is my like, really ideal but i will go higher if it's a paddle i really like for example my gearbox is significantly higher than i usually prefer i think mine's at like 125 right now mm -hmm. which is you know 10 points outside of my range which is very significant but i like the paddle enough that i'm willing to put up with it i see i think my range is probably like 117 to around the 120 um i think that's where the sweet spot for me is and I would like to see more companies offer swing weights instead of weights on yes. their site, you know, for selection. I the mean, do company... both, but definitely add it. Yeah, do, do both, but definitely add it. I think the, that's why um, when, like, Thrive came to me and I checked their site, like, oh, I can choose the swing weight. I think their swing weights right now, though, for selections for the paddles that they currently have are only, like, 117 to, like, 121. Uh, yeah. But it's a start, like it's really hard to go something lower because once you start going lower, you know, it's you're like, you're using less material. At least that's what I think most companies are doing to get a lower swing. You're, you're using less materials to bring that swing weight down. It, like, you know, less glue or less sheets in the paddle face or like yep. a thinner edge guard or something like that. And so that messes with durability and that can lead to potential, you know, delamination, core corruption, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I would like to see more companies do that. If they can do that, like, I think everybody will be better off for it. And if they're just a little bit more educated on the swing weight, people can have a better time playing pickleball and you won't buy so many paddles, testing out so many paddles, return them because you don't like them. Or, and if you do know, you can then now like add a little bit of weight like here and there. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it just makes more sense, right? There, there wouldn't be so much waste right because all we want to do is really just play with the best paddle we can get and get out there and play and not have to worry about our paddles so much yeah i really hope it becomes a thing that is more standard in the industry especially because 
it's really not hard for companies to figure this out. You could easily go buy the Brafitti SW1 with the five centimeter pickleball adapter and do that. You could even use like Wait, how some much of is the that new machine? 250 bucks and with the adapter like 275 like absolute minuscule cost for literally any pickleball company you're a brand new pickleball company easy to eat that cost like yeah easily you should be doing it period and there are there is a wilson i think it's called the bayardo pro tune which is really expensive but if you wanted to be bougie I guess you could use that it's like eight <laughs> grand and then there's the yeah. head four and one only problem I have with this, and this is only for the companies out there, no one else listening to this is going to care about this. Those are great machines. However, however, I don't like them for the simple fact that they use 10 centimeters for the measurement like they do in tennis, which is fine. But in pickleball, I don't think that number works as well. For example, Pickleball Central is using a head four in one machine with that measurement, and their swing weight numbers are completely different from what me, John Q, Braden, from what everyone else publishes. So I think those numbers are going to clash and cause some confusion because their numbers are a lot lower. So you'll, they'll have like a measurement of 89. But if you switched that into our scale, that would it, be, it I'm just going to make, yeah, it doesn't match. It would be like 115 for me. But so, it correlates though, right? So like. Yeah, they would be a, a relative ranking. The only thing, the reason I don't like it is mm -hmm. uh, when you use that measurement, the scale shrinks. So for example, 90 is about as low as it goes on our scale. And then on the really high end, it's like 130. So it's a pretty okay. big range. The problem is if you do 10 centimeters, you have a range. I'm going to make up a number because I, I don't know exactly the range. I just have a mm -hmm. ballpark. You might have 70 to 90 instead of 90 to 130. So it's a lot harder to tell someone Instead uh, of saying at 10 points, you will feel a very large difference or even five points. Now you're saying like, well, at two and a half or 2.7 is when you'll feel a different 93 versus 89 might be a huge difference, but it's a small number. So it's harder to remember, in my opinion, versus I 110 see. and 120. I see. So, I mean, Pickleball Central, switch it up. People already know, <laughs> you know, the numbers they're following are our numbers. Mr. Cowley. Switch it up. Tell your team. So, yeah, we know the guys from Pickleball Central. That's why. <laughs> that's right. Yes. I, I did actually write to them a while ago and mention like, hey, we should do this. And also, if anyone wants to hear some of the reasons that outside of what I just said, you could message the guy at Brafitti, Brian over there, super smart guy. He can give you all the arguments better than I can of why he thinks that's better than 10 centimeters. But I don't know. I think a lot of the industry is used to five centimeters. I think the larger machines should adopt to that if possible and confuse less people. But all that to say, let's get swing weight adopted into pickleball. It would not be that hard for you guys to do it. It would make everything better for the consumers. It, it's just better overall. Yes. Listen to us. Listen to Chris. Your overlord has spoken. So. <laughs> oh, gosh. Your oh, gosh. All spoken. right. Last thing I want to say uh, for anyone who doesn't want to deal with lead tape, uh, you know, because it can be toxic. And if you don't want to wash your hands all the time, you can use tungsten tape. The only thing is tungsten tape per like gram or ounce of weight is a lot more than lead tape. Yeah. So lead tape is just cheaper. Mm -hmm. But and is you know, it usually if, if heavier too? No. Tungsten. Well, so I tungsten mean, is heavier. It's, tungsten is heavier per, you know, the same length or thickness or whatever. Okay. Oh, oh, one other thing I was going to say, too, uh, about lead tape and the positions. A lot of people will say, like, hey, can you tell me what the best setup for this paddle is? And you really have to just try it for yourself. I don't mind giving people a general idea. Like I said, what I think works on the gearbox in my review. But every person is different. I am weak. You might be super strong. So you might be able to put lead at three and nine on the gearbox. I can't do that. If I could hold it at three and nine. I would. I'd get even more stability. So it, like some people, you know, want to shift the balance. They put it in the handle. Some want it at the throat because they don't want head heavy. Some people are like, dude, I'm not weak. I'm going to put it all in the head. Stop being weak. So like you just got to try and figure out what works <laughs> for you. And it's super easy. Just go to the court, put some in one spot, play some games. You don't like it. Take it off. Put it in a new spot. And slowly yeah. you will figure out what you generally like for paddles. 
Yeah, I think starting off, I always tell people try four and eight or three and nine. Those yes. are like the safest spots to go. Yes. I would say try three and nine. If you never try, I would try three and nine first because yep. I think that's where you get stability, and then you can really feel the difference. Like I feel like it's it's noticeable, right? Yeah. I mean, it's really noticeable if you put it in, you know, two and ten or eleven and two, like yeah. in the top in the top there. You can really feel that, but I think that can be detrimental, and you might. I don't know, injure yourself. You might develop tennis elbow or something if you're not used to swing something with such a higher swing weight. So three and nine is a place where you'll get the most feel out of it. And then from there you can tell, okay, this is, this is good, but I'm a little too slow. Maybe it's a little too, bit too, um, head heavy. So let's shift it down to, you know, yep. four and eight or even what five and seven in the throat areas uh and then i think that's how you should probably do it and for me the weight i typically like to start off with 0. 0.5 um ounces overall like i'll, I'll cut a strip that's 0. 0.5 Whew, ounces and i'll just you go heavy just, yeah because i really want to feel the difference and then i'll cut that in half. yeah like, this this is if you don't know where to start right that's all yes. i'm saying if you do 0. 0.5 yes that's a substantial amount i think i think you said 0. Zero, like was it 0. 0.3 is where you like to be to 0. 0.4 like maybe, yeah to 0. 0.4 okay so i do 0. 0.5 cut that in half and then i'll move those around um and then if you think that's still too much then you can go to 0. 0.4 um and here's a quick tip for you guys if you i mean you know most of the the tape there's adhesive on one side and you can take it off your paddle and like put it back on right but yeah like, you know if it's lead you know it can be you know dangerous to handle for long excessive periods of time and you don't want to like pick at it and touch it a lot what you can do is you can put the lead tape on this, the adhesive part on the other sticky side of like magnetic tape or gaffer's tape anything that you covered the edge guard of your paddle with right and then that way like you can just take off the magnetic tape and you can move the magne magnetic tape around without the actual lead tape adhering to the side of the paddle if that kind of makes yeah. sense i right. did that actually when i was new to lead tape so that i could kind of keep placing the lead tape without it being stuck to my paddle because i was kind of worried about like well i don't want to buy a lot of lead tape so that is also a really good tip yeah and this is a good way just to you know it's a little annoying to kind of do sometimes but if you're experimenting for the first time this is a good way to kind of to do it and move it around so you're not because some of the adhesive on some of that lead tape is very strong and you're like, oh man, this is kind of a pain to like pull off, right? So yeah. this is an easier way to kind of pull it off and to test very quickly and, and move it about very quickly. Also, I do like your suggestion of, you know, not everyone's going to be able to start at 0 0.5 ounces, but the more weight you add in these locations, the more substantial of a change you're going to feel. If you add yes. 0 0.1 ounces, you're probably not going to feel a huge difference. You might, but it's gonna be very minor. If you start that way and slowly take away the weight, you can dial in what it is you like, where it's, I mean, it's not harder to add more weight after the fact, but I do think it's easier to start with quite a bit and then keep trimming it down until you get to what you want. Cause you'll get to experience, I think when people are like, oh, it doesn't make a difference or I didn't like it, it's cause of the location they picked or they didn't add enough weight. I've seen some people add, yeah. you know, less than 0 0.1 ounces really really thin strips to their paddle and i'm like yeah like that's not doing anything basically mm -hmm. right exactly yeah that's like the metal bone from adidas just adding <laughs> a little bit of weights to this one area nothing okay don't be like the metal bone from adidas okay oh man dude there is <laughs> wow well, well, so funny <laughs> Tell there me, Chris, this, tell me. <laughs> there was this Facebook post that I read the other day and that, you know, this guy was like talking about how amazing the uh, the metal bones was. And there were people commenting like, yeah, I heard this thing's, you know, basically junk or some people had hit it and thought it was junk. And uh, there were just people. Uh, someone someone was like, oh, man, Chris, like your review was total bull crap on the metal bone. Like that paddle's so good blah 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 and i was like and he said he said <laughs> dude half the paddles on the market are just copycats with different logos on them and at least adidas tried something and i was like i dude, literally said almost word for word that's pretty fair that in my review oh, so like, really? it's oh. true yes yeah, so yeah. i was like what do you mean my review is bullcrap i said the same thing you people are said. very selective 
with their hearing. <laughs> and I know. Here, here, here's something interesting. Well, not really interesting, but that Adidas paddle is edgeless, right? Yeah. And it's true. I, I know, you know, companies are coming out with edgeless paddles. Edgeless paddles, as cool as they are, I yep. think overall are at, at their point in right now, like what do we have yes. right now out on the market? They're inferior in performance. Yes. To Completely agree. Paddles with edges. And the reason is because of what we just said, the weight on the side. That edge guard adds weight to the paddle and it helps with the twist weight. It helps with the swing weight and it makes it more uh, stable. I think the only paddles that are edgeless that I kind of like are the Gearbox paddles, the Pro paddles. And, and they still need lead, and, and that's because they're missing an edge guard. Exactly, and the Lux as well. Um, but like the 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 Lux controller, like the Power Air, I used to play with that one. That thing does not feel good, uh, and like it's it just feels jarring. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh my yep. gosh! Look who decided to show. I'm in I'm in Chicago right now. Look who it is here. I'm gonna show you guys this. What's up, Kobe? Yeah. <laughs> For those of you listening, it's it's Will's dog. Hello, pickleball podcast. Oh shoot, my brother. Yeah, say say what's up. Say what's up, Randy. What's oh hey, we got the we got the Will clone. Oh, you got a nice little setup going here. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. But yeah, the the biggest thing I would say when it comes to edgeless paddles, because a lot of people actually don't know this. There are a lot of people, more so newer people, um, but there's still a lot of people who think not having an edge guard is better because they're like, oh, well, when I hit in that area, I won't hit the edge guard and it, my ball won't do weird stuff. But actually, in my opinion, it's the opposite. You will have more stability and the ball will have more energy on a paddle with an edge guard most of the time. Com yeah. For example, perfect, perfect example of this is the mm -hmm. double black diamond and the six zero infinity. Yes. The infinity is more stable, be or sorry, the original double black diamond is more stable because it has an edge guard and the infinity doesn't. Yeah, no, it's true. And I don't know, did you do a review or say anything about the, I mean, we talked about it before, but yeah, the double black diamond infinity, while it's swell, it hits like, it's one of the better edgeless paddles that I've hit with. But yes. Yeah, I would still pick um, the double black diamond with the edge card. It's, it performs better. It's cheaper. Yes. Uh, yep. Like, yeah, it's just... Yeah, they're just better. At this point in time, they are just better, in my yeah. opinion. So until you figure out, until companies figure out something to, you know, add uh, stability and twist weight and increase the swing weight, um, I think the only benefits of the edgeless paddles are that they look good and they do feel like they swing faster, they cut through the air, but that yes. could just be because their swing weight is lower. So, I mean... I think it's both. Yeah. Yeah, I think I definitely think it's both. So like, you know, for some people giving up that forgiveness might be worth it to gain the hand speed because the infinity is at like 110 to 112 swing weight and the original is like 115. So I, five points is a definitely a, huge, a noticeable difference. Yeah, noticeable. It's not huge. It's noticeable for sure. Yeah, definitely noticeable. But again, you're giving up that stability. And then if you're going to add lead tape, like you're going to add some of that back. So in my opinion, and you're going to actually see this as a huge trend. I'm going to let you guys know now. A lot uh -huh. of companies are working on edgeless paddles. And if you want an edgeless paddle, that's totally fine. It's not like they're terrible. There is a market for it. There are people who are going to like it more. But I, generally speaking, in this current state, edgeless or edged paddles are just better than edgeless. And you're going to see a wave of edgeless very soon. You know what companies should do? Maybe we should just do this. We just create a universal edge guard that you can just attach to any paddle. Because if the future is edgeless, if you create an edge guard that can kind of clip on somehow, like, you know, with tension or whatever, and then you can slot weight into them, dude, game changer. That would be cool, except it would be illegal. Would it? Yeah, because you can't, you can't add you can't add like another component to the paddle that isn't lead tape, basically. Really? That's in the bylaws or that's in the laws for USAP? Yeah, I can't I don't know what the exact section of the rule is, but you can't like that would be something, you know, like you couldn't screw bolts into your paddle right now. That would be illegal even though it's wait, wait, what for do you, the Adidas. What, okay, that was about to say I was like, wait. It's cuz it didn't it wasn't built for that. Like you modified it for something it wasn't built to do. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, some changes need but to be made. It would be interesting if you could do that. That would be kind of cool. 
Yeah, that would be cool because then you could have just one universal edge guard and then you can move the weight up in there and then you don't have to always continually buy, you know, lead tape. Um, mm-hmm. And then cools. And then also the edge guard could be designed differently to give your paddle some flair because let's face it, we all want a little flair when we're trying to search for a paddle in the paddle stack when we're playing rec games. <laughs> yeah. Yep, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much our thoughts on lead tape. If you guys have never tried it, I highly suggest you give it a shot. Just buy a pack of lead on Amazon. I'll try and remember to link some down in the description below. But if you go check out my lead tape video on YouTube, it's all linked there. You can buy pre-cut strips. You can buy different size thickness. Just go watch that video if um, if you need more information. And I think you'll have it there. Sweet. But, Will, we've officially made it to the kitchen. Word kitchen yes all right i wasn't in the so, kitchen though this weekend i was in the dining room eating all the things dude i meals. think we were all in the kitchen this week <laughs> <laughs> and i was i was in the kitchen a little bit too much so now i'm gonna pay for it in the gym <laughs> okay <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> that's right all right so first thing i want to go over is this new company called the owl and the reason Ooh. actually if you our follow Ooh. paddles at all you've probably seen them everywhere they made a pretty big splash but they are the first usap approved paddle on the new quiet list which yes. we've talked a little bit about job, in Al. the past mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. this is the first one to officially make it onto that list so we'll chat about it again big thing is that it's quiet that is its main yeah. selling point as far as i'm aware it is not approved for tournaments it's only approved for this quiet list, which we'll kind of get into why I think that's yeah. kind of dumb. Right. But yeah. it's priced yeah. at 169. And yeah, it's not, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is it that they just want to come to market first to say they're the first on this approved quiet list? It'd be cool to have, you know, on the quiet list and you can use it for tournaments. That would have made a huge splash. I'm sure they're working on yeah. something. But um, yeah, they, they've gotten some uh, some buzz because they were first. Have you played with it or have you heard of anybody playing with it? No, nope, haven't heard of anybody playing with it yet. I think a lot of them, I don't think they ship until like two days from now. And that's if you did like the founders one and then everyone else, it's not till like later in December. So it probably yeah. will be a minute before anyone actually gets to hit it. But another reason it kind of gained some buzz is John McEnroe and Drew Brees, Brees. are in- endorsing it. Wow. John so, Mac. This man is I know, just that getting one's more funny and me. more into pickleball. Yeah. yeah the loudest <laughs> dude playing with the quietest paddle. The yeah. irony. Yeah. I know. I wonder if he tries to throw it on the ground when he's mad or whatever, when he gets smoked by, I don't know, whoever he was playing with. It was Agassi and Roddick. If like, it'll be like, psh, yeah. like, like, you know, maybe it'll make an owl sound Woo-hoo, when it hits the ground. That would be so funny. Uh, it's, it's a good pretty, name. Pretty ironic. I, will say, I like the name. Owl. It's a good name. Yeah. Anyways. Do you think, do you think it's cool? So from what I can tell, looking at their website, the main thing that is causing all the buzz for this paddle, because the website says it's a poly core, it's same dimensions. The biggest thing is if you look at the face of it, Mm -hmm. it looks like it's like felt all over it. Yeah, it does look like felt. Like it looked like somebody cut off a piece of, you know, my chinos or something and they just plastered it on to the paddle, you know? Yeah, which is... Velvet? interesting i'm sure that Swing. is reducing sound but it's kind of weird that it's it's still a polycore which is part of the reason i think it's loud but who knows maybe that felt like really does significantly reduce that noise man i'm telling you until you mess with the core like i think it's still gonna be loud i think you, you imagine need a combination. eva plus this felt hmm that that might that, that would that be like be silent good. Yeah, that would probably be silent. I don't know why. What if, okay, what if you just made a ball that was some sort of like foam or something? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It would be so much less confusing. We'll just do it now. We'll talk about, we'll talk about some of this other stuff with the paddle in a minute, but we'll just top into why I think the whole USAP approved quiet list is kind of stupid. Yes. You are creating this entire new sector of things that you have to approve, which I don't even know what tests they run it through. Maybe they have a room and they do some like decibel and frequency uh, sounds or whatever to figure out if it falls under a certain threshold. Okay. Yeah. 
but you cause confusion because now you have two lists. If I am brand new to pickleball and all yeah. I know is that I need a quiet paddle or I hear that, oh, this is a quiet paddle that people buy. And let's say I get really into it. And within my first month, I'm like, dang, I'm going to a tournament. I show up and someone's like, hey, you can't use that. That's not tournament approved here. You can't use that. Now you're like, well, what the heck? First of all, you spent $170 on a paddle that you can't use in a tournament. And you probably didn't even know. And the market's going to have even more of these soon. I just think the ball would have been so much more of the obvious choice. Now, if a neighborhood needs it to be quieter, yeah. you can force every person there to use that ball. You can't force them. Well, I mean, maybe you can and they just can't play. But it's way more inconvenient to force them to buy a nearly $200 paddle. Right. I mean, there are some balls out there, I think. Like, Gamma makes some sort of foam ball that's quiet. And I, I'm pretty sure I saw another ad. I forgot the name of the brand or the company, but they're making it's like a tr it's like a ball for training, like indoors. Mm. So you can hit against the wall that's made out of foam. But they claim that it has a similar bounce, um, you know, and height, like bounce height and whatnot to a regular pickleball. And I'm sure you could make something like that that could work but we're not going to see that man shoot people I, need to buy more paddles you know the industry needs to make money yeah it's uh, yeah i mean they're gonna make less money off the ball that's for sure but seemed like a much more obvious choice now it does of course it comes with drawbacks the game is gonna feel different but also it's still gonna feel different with these quiet approved paddles and you have to spend a lot more money so maybe some people are willing to do that but it feels kind of odd to me. And my biggest issue is now people, let's just take the vice, for example. I mm -hmm. tried finding the guidelines of what makes a quiet approved paddle. Like, do you still have to pass a certain deflection test? Do you still like, I have no idea what it takes to pass this quiet list, but is the vice now going to be in that list? And if so, there are plenty of people in rec who don't like playing against that thing because it hits it's so hard. And it's so quiet. where do you, and it's quiet. So you where do you draw the line of uh -huh. what's too much or like this paddle has too much spin? Like maybe the felt is insane for spin or maybe some of these quiet paddles have way more power. Like it just becomes a whole other thing to manage that I think is way more, way more time consuming than anyone wants to deal with. I mean, this is why we have our jobs, Chris. So <laughs> I mean, some for us to do, I guess, to look into. Now I got to test quiet paddles too. What? Shoot. Oh gosh. Uh, yeah, I didn't even think. I actually didn't even really think about having to review an entirely different category of paddle. Well, that's if they catch on. I do you think that this will catch on? That's the thing. Do you think it will catch on? Personally, I don't think it will. Well, hmm. I think there are going to be areas where they're massively popular because they have no other choice if they want to play pickleball. But I think the vast majority of areas will still be fine. Like, there's no way I imagine the public courts that I go to in the summer that I show up and even 25% of the people are showing up with a quiet paddle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless the quiet paddles are approved for both and maybe the quiet paddles are OP, like absolutely right. ridiculous right. to play, which they could be. If they, I think that would have been the, the best way to get everyone on board. But I think if you want to make it quiet, some of the materials probably make it illegal for tournament play. Like, obviously, this felt face, I'm going to guess, probably doesn't pass tournament play. So it's like, you know, this give and take of, you know, it's too much for tournament play, but it still works for quiet. I don't know. Like, I think that would have been another good way to do it. But, yeah, it's yeah. kind of... I'd well, be curious this? to know what the audience thinks. Like, you guys let us know what you think. Would you buy one of these? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Like, you let us know what you think. Oh, they would buy it if they were forced to play it. If this is the only place they could play in their neighborhood. like. Well, yeah, yeah. No, but I just mean, like, would you, even if your neighborhood didn't enforce it, which is probably most areas of the country, is anyone going to buy it? Doubt it. Because they wouldn't just go play there. They'd go play somewhere else. Like, yeah. why would they buy it, right? It's like, oh, if this court only allows you to use quiet paddles, like, oh, I'll just go somewhere else because yep. it it just massive adoption, right? It's if most people play with it, then yeah, I'll sway to it. I'll I'll play with it. I'll pick it up. 
I don't think I really care either way, but people are going to play with whatever everybody else is playing with. So unless something happens where you're forced to play with or, you know, the majority of tournaments or something, you know, switches on to it, no one's going to no, no one's going to buy it. That's my opinion. Yeah. That's that's kind of what I think too. Even if you had 50% of the people at my public courts using that, I I'm sure there's a sound reduction. But yeah. is 50% of the players at the court enough of a sound reduction to make the neighborhood be happy about it? Like if half the courts are using quiet and the other half aren't, I still think pickleball is loud enough that the other 50% of people still using the loud ones are going to annoy the people who care about the noise. Yeah, it'd be so funny if everybody switched to these quiet ones and the neighborhood's still complaining. Like, no, <laughs> it's not the pickleball. It's it's the people who it's are the people. playing. Yeah. Yep. There's <laughs> too much chattering, too much back and forth, you know, too much chirping. Shut up. Yep. You missed They're that like third that shot drop. Your drive Dude, sucks. My voice alone is probably loud enough to cause sound <laughs> complaints at the court. Oh, man. It's not even the, the, the noise of your voice. It's the pitch that it comes out of your mouth. That's what it is. Ugh. I actually I was thinking about this. Who was, I might have just been with family, but I did say something. I was like, you know, it might not be the volume. It might just be the pitch of my voice. And I was like, that's not changing. Maybe so voice. Yeah, that's not changing. <laughs> Shoot, maybe you okay. should put Chris's voice on some sort of approval list. He needs to go through some sort of filter so that it, you know, the nasally the nasalness like gets out you know we'll see. i do i do give huge props to all the spouses out there that have to listen to this podcast because like you know <laughs> the husband or the wife is into it and they just have to hear me in the car even if they don't care about pickleball they're probably like please any other podcast <laughs> any other podcast but this one yeah uh, yeah they're probably so relieving funny. when they're probably relieved when they hear my voice comes on it's like oh my gosh thank goodness will you need to talk more on this podcast oh my gosh <laughs> probably probably okay the other thing i want to say about this i am curious when owl is going to get slapped with a cease and desist from head because remember Wait, when because electrum got hit with a cease and desist by head because they advertised graphene in their paddle and head i guess oh. has some patents that says only we can do that for pickleball paddles so they had to cease all marketing of that and they mention graphene in in the face of th their face material so i wonder if they're going to get hit with that and then be told mm. either you can't sell this or the marketing has to remove that that's annoying but yeah, yeah. No, no, at least annoying for them do you know what graphene yeah. is i mean i had done bits of research and basically just learned that it's kind of like a super material but that's about all the extent of my knowledge goes it's like graphite which is essentially like pure carbon but i think it's one sheet or one layer of it like i mean i i, I don't know you guys in the comments you can correct me if i'm wrong but from what i remember because when i used to play tennis graphene was in their tennis rackets and i remember the rep telling me and i don't know if the rep even had it right but he says yeah it's basically um yeah graphite but it's in a single sheet and it's very strong one way but it's like brittle the other way and i don't know That's interesting know. interesting but uh yeah that's pretty much all i got on the owl paddle i do i guess this is just a small thing but i will be at the san clemente ppa uh coming this week i'm home for two days before <laughs> I travel again. Gosh, I just want to break so bad. I did this. Guy. I did this to myself, but I, dude, I had to because, I, okay, I'm not playing with Will, guys. And I'm not playing with my brother. This is the first time I have ever done a blind date at a pickleball tournament. I'm playing with Ed Jew from Davis I mean, Pickleball. It's not necessarily a blind date. You know who this guy is. You well, know who no, Ed. Yes, I know who he is, but I've never played with him. This is true. Okay. Okay. But I, okay. I, I'll actually give you credit for that because half of, at least for me, half of the anxiety of a blind date would be knowing if the person I'm playing with, I'm going to get along with. I don't know Ed that well, but I already know he will be so easy to get along with on the court. That will not yeah. be an issue. Yeah. Can't wait to hear about that. Ed, I'm sorry. Dude, you know. what if, what if him and him and I get gold? Oh, that would be very impressive. I'm like, wow, Ed, you are an incredible pickleball player. Wow. <laughs> he did say we're stacking Ed. me on the left. So, I mean, who knows, man? Who knows? Left. And know. here's what I said. I said, well, what did I say? 
I think I messaged him and I was like, dude, I hope your back is strong. You're going to have to carry me. And he was like, no way, man. We're putting you on the left. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, but Ed is jacked. Dude, Ed is jacked. Ed that is guy jacked, is. dude. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to get to in the gym eventually. Okay. Eventually. All right. Well, uh, yeah. But then after that, Room I'm playing with uh, someone named Tiff. That was who I met. Uh, just someone I met in the California group last time I was there. Excited to play mixed with her. I think that'll be fun. It sounds like she, from everything I've heard in her group, she plays exactly like my mixed partner in Minnesota. Oh. So right. should be really easy. <laughs> Very Heck familiar. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Okay, yeah. sweet. All right. Um, anything else for that that you want to tell the audience? No? No, not much. I mean, playing singles, so all three events. And then if you're there and you want to say hi, please come say hi. I love chatting with you guys. Yeah, Don't be scared. I won't bite. For Chris and Ed. Ed needs all the support he can get. Oh, my gosh. Sheesh. Yeah, please come watch. So that way, if I play fine, you guys can come back to the future pod and tell Will Chris played fine. <laughs> do it. If do you, it. Do it for me, guys. Do it for you. You should just win so you can come back in the pod and spite me. That'll be, Dude, that'll I'm, be great. I don't know if man, I'll that be would pissed be or epic. I'll be proud. I'm not sure. <laughs> I really don't know. Yeah. You know. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find yeah. out eventually. Okay. But yeah, that's all last, I got. Okay. Last thing I'm going to tell you about is my time here at Thanksgiving. Did you play pickleball while you were you know, with your- A animals? little bit. Yep. Uh, I was in Kansas and I played at just like this indoor rec center, like on a gym floor, played like two days, It you know, fairly casual pickleball, but got to play a little bit. Gotcha. I, I played like for maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes here in Chicago. It's cold, but yeah, we were, <laughs> we, we didn't really, I mean, I was down for it, but it's, let's just say it's not the best weather to be playing pickleball in. There's no indoor facilities, but my cousin, Lakina, that Kina, she was she just came back from Massachusetts and uh, she was recently married. I was here last year uh, for a wedding, and she was like, "Will, let's play pickleball." I've been I've been really want to play pickleball, and I'm like, "You sure, dude? It's cold." Like, I was like, "All right, whatever. I'm down. Let's go. I'm with it." And then her mom came, my brother came, my brother's girlfriend, her husband came, and here's the thing. First of all, I tried this thing there. I forgot what it was called. Maybe I'll look it up, but it was on Amazon. I had it in my car and they're like these like plastic slats that you can kind of set up your own court. We basically went to like a tennis court and we didn't lower the net. We just put these slats in to kind of make the lines instead of taping up a whole entire thing. And, and if you're playing very casually, like in a, you know, in a jiffy, like it will do right but if you're playing anything serious probably not the best but i set him up i was like oh this is kind of cool like easy to do and we get to playing right yeah i dude me and my brother we were we were kind of getting smoked and i was like what's going Ooh. on here dude yeah what i was like what and then i was like damn lakina and uh brandon how long y'all been playing they're like oh since september i'm like what I'm out here like lo like like losing in some hand battles. Like wh there's let no me, way. Let me let me guess. Let me guess. You were wearing Crocs. No, I wasn't wearing. It was too cold for that. I was wearing Vans. Like I'm wow. <laughs> okay, I'm impressed. It wasn't Crocs. This guy basically lives in Crocs. <laughs> yes, I do. I I play pretty well in those Crocs. It makes me like more efficient with my movement. Some people are like, man, the dis the disrespect. Well, how are you gonna wear Crocs? Some people don't even realize it until like after it's the game. He's. <laughs> I've seen this happen many times. People don't notice till the end of the game because you don't move very badly for being in Crocs. Yeah, and here's the thing: they're in, they're they're in Croc slides. They're not even like the full Crocs with like you know with the strap in the back. Like I can't even go into Croc sport mode, as some people would call it. I was doing it at uh, nationals, and uh, Joseph from Pickleball Center, who was watching me, was like, "Dude, Will, you were turning on those Crocs in sport mode?" Because I was I was playing against. Um, uh, Dalton, he's an ambassador for Sixer. He just finished uh, playing in the 4 5, 19 plus. He lost to Lauren Mercado, like just barely. It was a great match, and they were like, they, they were playing so good. And then he asked me to play, and me and your brother were holding our own, I'm, I will say. And I was in Crocs. It's pretty good. All right. Dude, you and Crocs is, yeah, it's something else. I just need a Croc sponsorship. If any of you guys know out there, like who I need to get in touch with, I honestly I haven't really tried, but like, I need I need some sort of sponsorship from Crocs. So if, if one of you guys know anybody out there or who I need to get in touch with, y'all let me know. That's, That's right. 
Okay. Anyways, so yeah, I'm losing hand battles or whatever, or we're, we're, we're barely making, or we're losing like, you know, the first half of this game. Okay. And I'm like, crap, man, y'all good. You've been playing since September? The heck? Right? And here's the kicker. Okay. Here's the kicker. My cousin, Lakana, okay, she's seven months pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and Getting I'm like, toasted. Dude, it was, I was like, ew, after I lost a few, I was like, yo, this ain't fair. It's three versus verse two. You got a little baby <laughs> in there. I, I, technically, it was three versus 1.5 because my brother is, is useless on the pickleball court. He's, he's still like tennis player mode so you know i'm up there in the kitchen you know, trying to do everything so but it's yeah, like I'll, one and a half versus three exactly and i'm like what dude and i was thinking in my head though i was like man if like because her hands are fast i mean if i go straight for like body bagger like does that count as two <laughs> oh, right no. yeah yeah and my brother <laughs> my brother comes up to me and he was like will don't do it bro bro if you, if you do it you know, that that vest is gonna unzip out. There's gonna be a baby arm that comes out there and just gonna smack that ball back and be like, "Gotcha, bitch!" Like, and I'm like, "Oh, shoot, you're right." Oh, no. You know? Oh, no. Shoot. But yo, could you look? Here's the thing, right? Can you imagine? Yo, know, she's standing there, hand on her hip, belly out. You know, paddle face, backhand, eleven o'clock. Bow, 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 bow. I'm like, "What the frick is going on?" I was like, "Man, I'm about to find a new career." That's how Dude, I felt like being being pregnant would be like almost a. It would be like a training tool because it would force you to keep the paddle out in front. Yeah, she had to keep the paddle out in front. I mean, yeah, like you can't it get it compact. too close to yourself. No, nah, no, nah, exactly. It was pretty compact. You know, her uh, her punches are pretty good. The only time that I was kind of getting her is like I would do a on my return to be a second shot drop, not even a third shot drop, but a second shot drop. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. It, I mean, not always intentional, but sometimes that actually works really well. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, that was that was it. That was my my little story. We had a, a good time. I did end up winning. You know, had to turn on the Jets a little bit. I had to play closer to my duper to you know get the win out of that. Took but off that the bands, put on the Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> said yeah now it's serious <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so but it was fun it was fun playing um uh with Akana and her husband uh it was a good time but that was pretty much the only pickleball that i was able to play out here because it was incredibly cold and yeah i don't think there's any indoor facilities here in the city of chicago that i know they play in some gyms here and there but um you know getting a chance to to get in and play and plus i don't know if i will say with. Hardwood just a floor. quick little rant i guess before we hop off dude yeah. i i just can't play okay i can play on a gym floor pickleball it's fine but i feel so much more useless for a couple of reasons one i like sliding especially if i'm playing singles but doubles like you still slide a little bit or you just even if you're not sliding like your foot can give a little bit on the rubber floor like you just stop. So like my movement feels a lot worse because I can't really move the way I want. And yeah. then the other big thing that actually makes it really difficult for me is not even so much the ball, you know, that changing will trip you up for like a couple points, but you'll get used to mm -hmm. it. The bigger thing for me is actually the color of the ball because most gym floors are orange ish orange yes. balls with my color blindness, extremely hard to see blue is mm -hmm. equally as bad mm -hmm. and yellow yellow is noticeably better but still a lot harder for me to see than like a Dura outside. So not being able to move the way I want and also the color of the ball, dude, it's rough. It's just hard. Like it feels like a different <laughs> game. You know, I agree. It is a different game. If you have the uh, slice down, it's really difficult to handle. Like yeah. on, on that court. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. So it's, it's not for, not for me. I mean, I'll do it. You know, if if that's the only option, I'll, I'd still rather play pickleball. But I am like, dang, this is tough. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right. Cool. Well, I mean, that's all I got. You got anything else that you want to tell the audience? Nope. I'm good. I'm gonna immediately start training for San Clemente so that me and Ed can get this gold. I got to come back with I. You, this is like my my villain or hero redemption arc right here. It's that part of the story. Like, Oh God, I leave the nest and I go get a gold without <laughs> will. And then it, it motivates will to get even better so that when we play together again, we just dominate. Nah, That's how I, I think, hope this goes. Okay. They might go like that, but 
Will might get a spinoff series where he goes out on his own and just leaves you behind. So I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. And then me and Ed are permanent partners, and we always beat you in the final of a tournament. Oh, man. That would be sick. <laughs> <laughs> in another world. Maybe in another world this will happen. That's, so. that's, the story. That's, that's something that a movie will be made out of. Like You might actually have to you know, do the documentary on this, you know, this inevitability. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. It would be so funny. Oh, gosh. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week. Peace.